Hi again and welcome to Iran Travel Guide. If you come to Iran, one of the cities that you must visit is Nishapur, where we are right now. This city is very beautiful. It's a small city, but it has very important history. It has more than over 3,000 years old of history. Yes, it's famous for its pottery, its poetry, its ceramics, as well as various handicrafts and other sort of carved goods, including its leather. Some of the things it's also famous for include its rhubarb and its turquoise, meaning that it, you've got some great flavours here because it's situated at the bottom of a mountain, which is a fertile plain in an otherwise arid country around. And also, the poetry of this area is very famous. There are lots of famous poets who, who were born in this city and lived here most of their uh, lifetime. Someone like Khayyam or Attar. These people have very important role in the literature of this country. Mm -hmm. So where we are now though has a very special and a very different function. It's equally part of the culture but at the same time it's something which was used for many different functions. Where we are now is a caravan sarai. Caravan sarais are basically the old guest houses. In the old time in the middle of the roads you know like the old time there was no car no buses so like people were traveling either by animals or like if they were really rich they had like a carriage or something and the tri trips were quite long so for making breaks between the trips they made spots in different cities for the people who were traveling to give them services. Yes, they were useful for defense and which is why they're constructed like this. A walled courtyard with an open space in the middle where caravans could park, you know, people like merchants as well as individual travelers, pilgrims and the like, could spend the nights here, safe from bandits, safe from, safe from people around them. So these would be situated one day's journey apart from each other on the major trade routes. Without them, the trade routes as we know them, such as the Silk Road being the most famous, would not have been able to exist. The Karvan Sarai where we're sitting right now, it is called Karvan Sarai of Shah Abbas. This Karvan Sarai, it belongs to Safavid era of Iran and it is built by the order of Shah Abbas Safavi, the king of Safavid era. Yes, it served many functions over time. Of course, as technology developed and transport got quicker, the old use of caravan sarais as lodging houses and for defense has fallen into disuse. So now it's, now it's a tourist complex with things all around us here showing the handicrafts, museums, as well as a traditional restaurant. But before that, it had a couple of different functions. In the old time, in the Gajar time, this place used to be an orphanage. And then after that, it turned to a, like a municipality for the government. And now it is back to its old functions, but in a touristy attraction way. So when you come here, there are different 42, I guess, different archers. And in each one now, there are people who are selling or exhibiting different handicrafts or uh, a restaurant where it's called the traditional restaurant of Iran. You can try the traditional food and have some tea. Yes, where we are now, I mean, you can really feel how safe you would have been inside this. These thick, thick walls of stone would have protected from invaders. So at the end of a hard day's ch travel in a caravan or on foot or on your horse by yourself, you would come to a place like this and be able to feel safe, bed down safely for the night and get the rest you need to pass on. That's still around today, but at the same time you can experience all these different cultural elements. I feel quite safe actually being here, sitting here in this beautiful and big courtyard with lots of beautiful shops around us. We're going to go have a look in the shops. Maybe we can find something to buy or just have something in the restaurant. So be with, be with us and thank you. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Natural history, yeah. So you can see some of the local wildlife. This, this area had a lot of wildlife in the past that now has been extinct from, from hunting. There was near here, there were, there were various species of tigers and leopards who became extinct in the early 20th century. But we can still find specimens of them here as well as monkeys, goats as, and other local animals, wolves too. Okay, I think this is enough for now. You should mm. come and see it yourself. Thank you for being with us and stay tuned for the next episode of Iran Travel. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
Charles Hafezier and we are here with a friend from Holland. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Iran. Thank you. <laughs> so how long have you been here in Iran? Uh, at this moment, uh, a week. A week. Yeah, and how did you find it? Yeah, it's, it's perfect because 16 years ago I was also in Iran. Okay, so it's your second time. Second time and I want to go back because 16 years ago it was so fine in Iran to stay here. Okay. And I want to see uh, Shiraz and Ishfahan and Pom. And what is the... Uh, look, if they're different, and sure. it's more different. Uh, yes. So it's a lot of change happens. Yeah, in yeah, six. yeah. It's okay. What has changed? Yeah. Uh, the people are more free uh -huh. to talk with. Uh, okay. Uh, Sixteen years ago, they don't dare to talk with me. Okay. Uh, when, <laughs> when, uh, and now they're talking, and they're very curious about me and my <laughs> friends and uh, the group. And I'm curious, of course, about them. Yeah. Yeah. They're so, nice people. I like the people at Rome. Yes. So they're friendly enough? Yes, very friendly. <laughs> oh, I, I love them. It's so when are you, uh, where are you going next after Shiraz? Next time we go to, uh, it's tomorrow we go to Esfahan. Okay, yeah. great. And, yeah, it's very great. It's three, three days and uh, oh, I love the city. And, and then we go to Tehran. Okay couple of days and then back to Amsterdam. Have you learned anything in Farsi, the language? <laughs> Erst? Uh, have you learned anything in the... Erst? Erst? Es? Es, you mean the word for love. Yeah, yeah. Es is the word for love. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> That's a beautiful yeah. word to learn. Yeah, 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 yeah like here, yeah. to love. Uh -huh. yeah, so you Did you know about, about it? No, no, I don't. Okay. I, I can't read it. No, but yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, my friend has a, buy a book uh -huh. and he, said he told a version, a poem, uh -huh. poem from uh, Hafez. It was nice, but it's all difficult to be in the other language. Sure, so sure. You have to hear it and to learn it in the language of the Hafez. But you, have you heard of him before at all? Like, did you know him at all? Uh, no, not in my country. Okay. No, no. Okay. Uh, no, no. Okay, so maybe this is a good way that you can go yeah, back yeah. to your country when and I tell them about and Hafez. Oh, I go via the internet and look Hafez and I sure, try yeah. to translate. But sure. Because I want to know about it. Sure, yes. yeah. Also, yes. Great. Yes, Great. If, you, if you'd have a message to say to people watching, what would you tell them about Iran? Uh, yes, come. Come to Iran and you, you will, knowing the, the people and the places, they are very kindly, the people, the, the place is very beautiful, the history, that's great. <laughs> and uh, I was in Persepolis, uh, so that is when you know the story about Iran, huh? and now it's, it's great. I love it. Yeah. Thank you so much for your uh, time. Thank you very yes. much. And have a nice stay thank in you. Iran. Thank, thank you. you.
Hi again and welcome back to Iran Travel Guide. We are here today at almost the end of a beautiful day in west of Iran, near Ardabil, in forests which is called Fandaglu. Yes, Fandaglu means hazelnut and the forest is over this way where there are lots and lots of interesting trees. Obviously there are lots of hazelnuts as of well. Of course, yeah. But there are also oaks, willows, hornbeams, many other types as well. And many fruit trees mm -hmm. like apple, like uh, palms. Yes, quince. Quince, yeah, yeah, different types of trees. Yeah, we're surrounded by farmland here, but in the middle of all this farmland, there's a nature reserve, which is where we're standing now. You may be able to see some crop fields behind us, but a lot of Iran's food comes from this northwestern region. And this area, it's over 18 hectares, which out of this 18 hectares... 18,000 hectares. 18,000, eh, excuse me, 18,000 hectares, which out of this 18,000 hectares, 4,000 is just the forest. And the rest are the plantation lands and also the grazing lands for animals. Yes, the, the cattle and the goats in this area are especially famous, as are the dairy products that come from their milk. Behind us here, we see some cows. We also see some goats further around. But this area is protected, which means that there's land given over here for deer and other wild animals to live peacefully and preserve endangered species. And not only animals. In this land, you can find thousands of different types of flowers, beautiful in different colors. Depends which season you come here. It's been recorded over a hundred different types of them is just recorded. Yes, and, and the landscape here for me was a real shock. I mean, even for you it was a bit Yeah, of a shock, yeah, it was. For me, like these rolling hills with small trees and bushes all around them, al along with the farmland, don't remind me of something like Iran at all. They, that's not what I thought it would be. They're, they remind me actually of Scotland and Northern Ireland, where my family is from and where, where we grew up, as well as the rolling hills of England. This is kind of, it was a real shock to me. Even on the drive up here, I was kept Yeah, he was, he was very nostalgic after yes, seeing absolutely. here. He's missing his grandma right now. <laughs> no, but this, this, whole, this whole northern plateau, once you come over the mountains, they become rolling hills, open farmland, lots of wheat, lots of barley grown here, potatoes too. And it's a really, really different environment from anywhere else. It catches all the water from the surrounding mountains and has very fertile land. And lots of herbs. The herbs mm -hmm. of this area also are very famous. The herbs which have medical usages, plus they can be used for cooking and other things, but they're very special only for this area. Yes, and so this whole area is really interesting and there's plenty of facilities around. We're, we're in, at the moment, just behind the camera here, <clears throat> there's an extensive campsite where there's various activities, including grass skiing, which I've yes. never tried and hopefully we'll get a chance to do later on. Yeah, it depends if it's open right yeah, now or absolutely. not. But yeah, grass skiing, uh, there are lots of accommodation here available, depends what you want, there are uh, different types of uh, cottages or just you can come here, do camping, there are yeah, camps tent, available, tents. tents around here and it's relatively accessible from the main road. From Restaurants, Ardabit, cafes and all sorts of facilities are available here. So we, we've seen a lot of families today enjoying being out in the, in the wild uh, nature, away from the cities. and. Yeah, it's, it's really, really nice, really peaceful. The wind comes here, so even though it's sunny, it's nice and cool, and it's it's just a really nice place to be. And I've heard actually there, like over there, there are lots of blackberry bushes, uh -huh. but I'm so looking forward to go and pick some because I love blackberries. Yeah, let's go see what we can find. So come with us as we explore here and in the forest later on. Okay, thank you. Cool, let's go down. Let's pick up some flowers. Just one or two. Don't yeah, not just one of two. Thank you. It's like, you know, the, the landscape there, it's like, reminds me of my childhood cartoons. Yeah. You know? What's, which one? Like the ones that like, 
I don't know, all the of magical them. Magical land. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Isn't it? There was one I remember very well. It was like exactly like this. There was a house with some goats and cows around. Yeah. We just look at the mountains in the background as well. So yeah. A mix of the rocks and the forest, the grey and the green. Yeah, it's just it's beautiful. Have you seen a hazelnut tree before? I have, yeah. Good. I've, I've picked nut, hazelnuts before. Oh, you did? Yeah. So we can do it again? Yeah, we'll find them in season. I'm not sure if the nuts will be ready at the moment. It's lots of flowers. Yeah. I mean, it's quite like, you're look, look, looking at some of these, you know, when you see this from far away, it almost looks like a rock field because there's so much white there, but actually when you get up close, you realize it's flowers. Cows over there. Yeah, I do. Grazing away. It's very beautiful to see that all the flowers and all the grasses, because of the wind, they have like a movement. Yeah, rippling which, through there. So yeah, which looks like a dance, as if they're dancing. They're dancing, or as if they're a river, or as if. Yeah, it looks the ocean. like a river. Exactly. There's a wave. Thanks for joining us again on Iran Travel Guide. We're here in the city of Mashhad, where we've come to a beautiful and luxury fish restaurant to try some of the local delicacies from the, from the region. Some of you might really like to travel to some countries to try the traditional food. But of course, there are some others who prefer to go keep on going with their own food or seafoods or Western foods. Yeah, there's a variety of different options available, which is great for people who perhaps don't eat certain things, have certain dietary requirements, vegetarians and the like. Yeah, I see you're quite excited. I am indeed. No, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, my it's, husband is very foody, so. Absolutely, and yeah. I'm really, I really love seafood. I mean, we've been looking forward to trying some great seafood for ages. Although Mashhad is not on the sea exactly, it's close enough to the Caspian that it gets a lot of the delicacies from that region. Not only in the Caspian Sea, also in the south of Iran, in the Persian Gulf and in north of course the Caspian Sea, you can have different types of fish and there are lots of rivers, river fish. So Iran has very good seafood, you can have like wherever you are in the country you can have fresh fish because there must be a river or a sea, something close to that area that you can have access to some fresh fish. Yes and some of the delicacies that come from the Caspian Sea are, are famous in the region and they have their own local dishes as well. The local curries and sauces that go with it make it very special. Kebabbed fish is a real speciality and is something very nice to try. It's a sort of different way of cooking it than others who, who would. But there's also of course the fried fish, battered fish and fish done in, in the oven, baked fish as well. Yeah, so we're going to have a look at the menu. Mm -hmm. I'm going to choose a food for Stuart. Mm -hmm. You want to go for seafood? Of course, that's why we're here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We have uh, different types of steaks. Mm -hmm. like uh, fish fish steaks. steaks, yes, of course, fish steaks. Trout steaks, and uh, shurida fish steak, mm -hmm. salmon steak. They even have a fish and chips there in British yeah. style as well. So, so for me, that would be like being home. I mean, I'm not going to try that right now because I'm <laughs> probably quite used to it, but it, it does exist, it's around. But also, interestingly, there, there's shrimps as well. So it's not just fish that they have. There are different types of seafood, mussels, scallops, other sort of things like crabs as well yeah. come from the Persian yeah. Gulf especially. Yeah. So there's lots of different types of fish as well as other seafood you can get, oysters, for example. So, you want to keep going with your choice and well, do something? I think, I think I know what I'm going to go for. Go for, you know? go for the king prawns, absolutely. Okay, yeah, okay. Some, I'm going to go for different. the same. 
Thank you for being with us. Mm -hmm. And sorry we cannot share the food with you. You should come yeah. and try it yourself. It's going to be good, definitely. Yeah. So, well, yeah, I think the, uh, the shrimp should be... Yeah, that's perfect for nice. me too. Absolutely. Yeah.